Tipperary. And yeah, uh, where do you live, Nancy? I'm here. Been here for a long time. My husband was Johnny Echeverry. Uh -huh. And uh, his father was Pello Echeverry. And when they formed this uh, Lee County Hall of Fame, Cowboy Hall of Fame, I remember Daisy Clayton coming and saying she wanted Pello to be one of the first ones to go into the Hall of Fame. He was a good man. Yes, that's what I hear. In fact, he was one of the first. Uh, inductees into the Cowboy Hall of Fame. Yes. And then several years later, followed by Johnny. Well, actually, uh, Daisy and Johnny grew up together, kind of like brother and sister. They lived on each side of the fence, but they, their ranches joined each other. And uh, so anyway, uh, she had always admired what Pello had done. He came to this country, and where not he, unlike... Right, where did he come from? He came from the Basque country, the French Basque Mountains. And he and two brothers came over. There were three of them. And all they knew was sheep ranch. Sheep. Mm -hmm. And they first settled in Idaho and then came down through the mountains to the Guadalupes and they were there and one brother had settled in Lee County and actually he homesteaded the place that was known as the Fort Ranch okay. and uh, he had a ruptured appendix and they called for one of the brothers to come help him, and that brother was Pello. And he came and helped him while he was sick. And he told his brother, uh, why don't you get some of this land next to me? It's, it's here, you should homestead it. And so that's how Pello homesteaded where the Itchberry Ranch is now. That was back in 1910. Wow. So and that's that, way before Le, uh, New Mexico was it a was, state. It was. And before the county became a county. Right. It was. Wow. It's about 18 miles northwest of Lovington. Mm -hmm. okay. It's State Road 457 runs right through the ranch. And did they raise sheep on that ranch? He primarily? did. When Johnny decided the government was getting where it wouldn't let them kill coyotes and it was so hard to make a living with the sheep, and he decided right then to sell the sheep. And that was like in 1984. Mm -hmm. But we were had over a thousand head of sheep at that time, oh my and we got rid of all of them. And of course, the good Lord knows everything, and He knew that I knew absolutely nothing about sheep. So I think that that was perhaps the good Lord leading Johnny to get rid of those sheep because He decided. 1998, it was time for Johnny to come home. So, and so that's when you lost him. That's when I lost Johnny. He went to the uh, Korean War, mm -hmm. and he was over there, and came home. And when he came home, he had been going. When he went into the service, he'd been going to uh, University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. But uh, when he came back, he saw that his daddy needed help on that ranch. And uh, the whole time he was in University of New Mexico, mm -hmm. he came home every weekend 
he spent his weekends, every weekend, coming home and helping his dad. And that's a long drive. That's a long drive. Yeah. But then after the service, he decided that was too far, so he went to Texas Tech and finished his education over there. And so what did he get a degree in? Well, finance and uh, business management and uh, actually Johnny thought that he knew just about all there was to ranching and mm -hmm. land management, but he took land management and finance and so he turned out pretty good. <laughs> When Johnny was in college, he took uh, land and ranch management and all, and he told his dad, he said, you know, there's stuff on this ranch that sheep like, but there's stuff that they don't like. So we're going to start at cattle and sheep. And it was Johnny that told his dad that it was time to separate it and make it both. So he went out and bought registered Hereford cattle and registered bulls to put on that ranch. And so he mixed them together. And it was a great idea because what the sheep didn't eat, the cattle liked. Mm -hmm. And Johnny took the dirt and soil of the ranch. He took the water, he took everything to Texas A&M and Texas Tech and let them analyze it for him and tell him what that ranch needed and what it didn't need. And he came back and put it into action. He, he planted the seed and things that grew best on that ranch. And then he found out how to kill the cactus and the mesquite and he said that uh, there was too much cactus and mesquite in Lee County. It took the moisture and the nutrients out of the ground that could belong to the grass. Mm -hmm. So he got busy and killed all the cactus and the mesquite mm. on that ranch. Wow. And there wasn't anything but beautiful grass. <laughs> The thing that was Johnny learned and studied was the water availability for southeastern New Mexico and West Texas. And it uh, really disturbed him when he would drive and see the farmers wasting water or anything wasting water because he knew eventually we weren't going to have no water. He was afraid. Right. So he got busy. He was the first one to go and study it and use it. Mm -hmm. And then he went to court. And he kept, he's gone against cities, mining, oil companies, everything to keep them from taking their water. And then nothing would kill him or hurt him as much as to see a fellow rancher selling water for a dollar. Uh -huh. He said, someday, in fact, he told the president of an oil company that wanted to use our water for an oil well. He said, no, there's no way that I'm gonna let you use my fresh water for that oil well because one day, Water's going to sell for more than your oil is. Yes, he, he knew that. And it does. That was it? back in the 60s and 70s that he fought so hard <laughs> for right. water. And this little bottle of water. And that our water drinking? is so contaminated yeah. now because of all of that. He knew it would be, even long before he. And now we're all fighting to save our water, just like he said back then, that it would come to that one day, we would fight. And he said, those people that are selling our water, 
one day they're going to need that water and they're not going to have it. Well, we were married uh, in 74 and uh, the good Lord took him home in 98. So we were just short of 25 years. Uh, he was an only child as far as Pello was concerned. Okay. But uh, Pello had married a <coughs> another Basque lady that came over and her husband had died in Montana. And she lost a husband and a daughter up there in the cold, pneumonia and all, and lost them. And she was left with three children, two girls and a boy, and uh, not a way in the world to support them. And uh, she worked in sheep camps, feeding sheep people and then eventually migrated. There were a lot of best people in California and Nevada, and they got a hold of her, and they decided to take care of her and her child. And then they heard of this old bachelor in New Mexico that needed a housekeeper and what have you. And back then, they arranged for marriages. I mean, you know? I, I couldn't believe that, and uh, but that's the way it was done. They were over here, they were foreigners. She needed somebody to support her and the children, and he needed a wife to take care of her. So they got married. Oh, really? Now, is that and out of that marriage, there was only one child, and that Johnny. was Johnny. Okay. But so he was such a good father to her children, too. He had two half-sisters and one half-brother. He adopted two girls, uh, two girl, two boys and one girl. And uh, one son lives in Dallas and uh, we see him. And another one passed away. Uh -huh. He was a doctor and uh, the girl is down in Austin, Texas, so we still keep in touch. Oh my goodness, no one speaks the Basque language unless you're Basque people. So I did mean, they speak Spanish a little bit? Uh, his mother and his daddy both could uh, converse in Basque and her two daughters learned Basque. Okay. But Johnny never learned it. No. Oh, he didn't? No, he That's never learned it. That's a shame. He never learned the best. And every year, once a year, they would go back to the Basque country and help their fellow people back there. Right. And uh, I know Mr. Etcheverry uh, provided tractors and different things for them to farm. Yes. We used to travel down in Mexico and people down there that weren't very learned mm -hmm. would see the Echeverry name. And they, oh my goodness, they thought it was really something because they had, uh, the president was Echeverria. Echeverria, yes. And they would get it mixed up. Uh -huh. And Johnny would say, no, no, I'm French. I'm not. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, uh, I, I, I was so proud to, to be a member of a family that was so giving and so loving. Right. Mr. Etcheverry, to this day, people will come up to me and say, did you realize that Mr. Etcheverry, we wouldn't own a penny to our name if he hadn't helped us. And he's helped people all over Lee County by their farm or by their ranch. I could give you the names mm -hmm. of ever so many well-known people here in Lee County that have been helped by Mr. Archberry. And that's and why he's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> just it's just, of it it's just like wonderful that, that he, right. and not only that, but naturally being from France and all, they were Catholics yes. and they had to go clear to Roswell 
In fact, that's where they went for Johnny to be born. But they had to go to Roswell to church service or anything. And he was the one that started that Catholic church in Lovington. Oh, Mr. Etcheberry? Yes. Oh, really? Yes, he did. And later, years later, Johnny and I started the uh, agriculture scholarship here at New Mexico Junior College. Oh yes, Daisy and Jerry Clayton both were just like brother and sister to us. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, it was Daisy Clayton that introduced us and she had told Johnny, I found just the right person for you. <laughs> so she would, she never let it rest until we got married in her backyard. Oh, really? Yes. That's a good friend. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. So why did she think you were perfect? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, she didn't tell you? <laughs> Just knew it. Uh, I have no idea. That's but wonderful. She was... She was just like a sister to Johnny, and she loved him dearly. Uh -huh. And uh, they would fuss and argue and what have you, but they always made up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I actually moved here because of my sister and her husband, Mabry and Rudy Owen. They owned a gift shop and jewelry store in Lovington. And uh, even though it turned out to be a short visit, it wound up to be a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved here in... And where'd you move from? I moved here from Redlands, California. Oh, gosh. But that was just a kind of a side step because I'm a diehard Texan and I was born and raised and lived in Texas, what? West Texas. Where? I was born on a ranch northwest of, oh, well, it's in Fisher County, New Mexico. It was on a ranch. Uh -huh. I had the, it was the east side of the Double Mountains down there that we had the ranch. And I was born out there on a cold night that my daddy couldn't get my mother town. <laughs> oh, really? So my grandmother was the midwife, and there I was born on that ranch. So I'm a West Texan by heart. We moved to California, and we were just out there, oh, less than two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, my three girls and I, and I have a son that was and TCU and Fort Worth, and the three girls and I came to Lovington, and there we stayed. We were there, well, I had lived there eight years before I ever married Johnny, or ever met Johnny. <laughs> uh, I was busy raising my girls, and I had no interest in getting married or even entertaining the idea. I just had no idea. And it just came at the right time. Like I say, God has his own way of doing things. Johnny saw how much I loved the Lord, I think. Actually, that drew him to me and me. He was a very kind person. He had been hurt deeply and... I could see that he needed a friend mostly. I didn't entertain anything else than just being his friend. And uh, then it developed in two years. But uh, I know that if you always put God first, he'll direct you, always. <laughs>